What's up everyone? Welcome to another video here with me on the channel. I'm Elio Hachi, the landscape photographer from Lebanon. On today's video, we're gonna talk about how to use a tripod and when to use it and when to avoid it. So, in my experience, when I started photography, I used to take my uh, tripod with me everywhere I used to go. Even if there's a direct sunlight, so much light is happening, I used to put the tripod and take photos. So I didn't understand when it's the right moment to take out the tripod and to use it. So today I'm gonna share with you in details when to put the tripod and use it. So let's get started. The first thing we should understand is your camera. The camera settings and your shutter speed. This is very important, the shutter speed. Why? Because whenever you click, the shutter goes down and goes up. And depending on the speed of the shutter, it's taking, collecting the image and the detail of the image. So if there is a slow shutter speed, which is below 100th of the second, and depending on the focal length, and you, you shake, like you have a bit of shake with your hand, your image is gonna end up not uh, sharp enough. So at that situation, you need to use the tripod and to make it stable and then take your shot. So we start here, you need to learn the shutter speed. You need to understand when to use the right shutter speed. So let's go through, through it fast. There, there's a thing where they say rule of thumb, which means with your focal length, if you have a wide angle, for example, if you're using 10 millimeter or 20 millimeter on the uh, full frame lens uh, camera, you should double the shutter speed to this amount to get a sharp image. And that means you should also stand still and take the shot. If you're at a focal length of 17 millimeter, uh, 70, sorry, 70, you should put your uh, shutter speed to 140th of the second, that's the minimum. Now for me, for my camera, I use for both of these, I use uh, for the Nikon, the minimum of 150th of the second, like I keep the camera automatically to raise the ISO to maximum uh, 800 ISO, and minimum ISO to 64. But the most important thing, I don't want the shutter speed to go one, uh, one fiftieth of the second below that. Only if I put it below that. And the Fujifilm, I can go a bit more slower, one thirtieth of the second. Why is that? Well, crop sensor have a better stabilization than a bigger sensor. And in the bigger sensor, you need to collect more data and this requires more stability with your hand. And it's a bit more fragile to capture the image. That's the right word. So in my experience, I felt like the Nikon, I tried the 130th, it's not that good. Uh, 150th of a second is good. And in the, in the Fujifilm, 130th of a second. And this again, depends on your scenario. Depends where you go out and shoot. But keep your settings like that. That's my advice for you. And whenever you encounter uh, a river or something like you want to have motion with, you try to find something stable, try to be creative to hold still your camera if you didn't take your tripod. Now I'm gonna take you to my trip to Slovakia where I had a long hike for 20 kilometer and definitely I didn't wanna carry my tripod with me. It's like a heavy thing to have on my back and at the beginning of the hike I knew that I have to climb up like almost 500 uh, meter up so we were walking up a top a mountain top so in this situation you have to look at your camera type of photography you're gonna take so for example i'm a landscape for photographer for me i got a conclusion that whenever i go for seascape photography i always take my camera now i explain why now I need to take photos in the seascape using uh, graduated ND filter because I want to capture the scene in one photo. Why is that not taking a multiple exposure shots? Well, I cannot work with that because the waves is moving and I cannot take three photos while the waves is moving. And I, sometimes I like to put a bit of motion in the picture. So 
my advice when you go for a seascape photography, you always need the tripod. You put your tripod, you make your composition, and then you wait for the wave to come, and then you shoot several shots to get this perfect sharp image and at the right moment. If you go for landscape, like you walk in woods or you go outside like with a beautiful landscape, it depends on the weather. Well, during the day, if it's like open, a bit cloudy, if you felt like your shutter speed is lowering down, you can bump up the ISO. Don't have a fear of having a, to lower, like not to raise your ISO. No worries about that. But I now put my uh, ISO automatic between 64 for the Nikon to 800. And for my Fujifilm, actually, I used to put it to DR400 the whole time. Why is that? Because when you put it at the uh, DR, dynamic range, 100, it doesn't collect much uh, dynamic range as if you put it to DR400. The Nikon have already uh, plenty of dynamic range in a post-production when you capture it in RAW, but in Fujifilm when you're shooting, when there's a scenario where there's a lot of light and a lot of shadows, it's not collecting the um, right amount like Nikon does. So that's why I always now put my DR400 in the camera, uh, in the Fujifilm. So this is where you should think about like on your camera the right shutter speed to put. Don't be afraid of your ISO. This is not right. And now I will show you how I managed to take beautiful shots in uh, Slovakia. So let's go to my computer here. We open the file. Now I marked and read the pictures. Now when I said like I put my shutter speed to be minimum if, uh, 1 30th of 1 50th of the second, let me see. Yeah, here I put it to 1 30th of the second. I take several shots. There might be a shake in my hand. So you should be careful when you take photos. Don't be afraid. Take several shots because you don't know if one of them have the shake of your hand. So I, I can demonstrate now to you now. So this I marked in red. It looks sharp from here, but if you zoom in, it looks sharp, but not sharp enough. Now I'm going to show you another one, same composition, not so different. Now you look here, it's pin sharp, the image. Okay. Now I will show you some other photos here, like this one. It was like the wind was so heavy, it was pulling me to the side. So I had to open my legs, take a proper shot and look here, it's not that sharp. And exact same moment, I took two shots. Look at the difference. So here there is a shake and here there is uh, the sound fix. So, uh, and if you look here, I had my shutter speed raised to 100th of the second. Same here, but there was so much wind. So on the spot, you try to see which the right, uh, the, the right shutter speed is for you. And don't be afraid of the ISO. Please don't be afraid of your ISO. And let me show you. There's a one where we went and we reached all the way down with this long hike. Now imagine carrying this tripod. It's like 1.8 kilo. I just got this one, but I would never take this tripod with me for this 20 kilometer hike. Look at this beautiful shot here. I took it handheld. Now, I don't think that it's too sharp. Yeah, this one is not too sharp. Now, that's disappointing, right? Yeah, there, there, there was so much wind. Now, I need to show you this one where you're in the woodland and there's a river coming and like you wanna take a motion from the water and you want to lower your shutter speed. Look here, it's one fifth of the second. Now, that's crazy, I know, but you, you need to compromise and to take this photo with with this amount of shutter speed. So what I did do here, I had my hiking stick, I put it down, I put my hand on top of it and I put on top the camera. So that was like almost a monopod. So I, I tried to find a solution to fix the, uh, the issue that I had at that moment. Look here, it's, it's sharp but not pin sharp. There is a bit of shake in the photo. So. 
and look at this one here. This one is not sharp. Same exact image here, pen sharp. So sometimes you have to compromise. You have to understand where you're going, what is your situation. Like if you have a long hack, you cannot take your tripod, then you have to do this, like raise your ISO or try to find a solution to use it. And the last thing I need to talk about is very important. Now, I have the Nikon Z7 II. This have, ins like inside the sensor, there's a stabilization, which some system called IBIS. And same for the X-T4. This is not the X-T4, I'm filming with the X-T4. This is X-T3. Now, if you have this X-T3, have a, a fixed sensor inside here, it's fixed, that, that raises an issue if you're using a zoom lens without optic image stabilization. So you should be aware and make sure to check your system. Now this lens for the Nikon, most zoom lenses for the Nikon, they don't have the image uh, stabilization, the, not the S-line. The, the S-line they don't have at all, which is the high quality image of their, the high product. Uh, lenses from them. They don't have uh, image uh, stabilization inside, optic image stabilization, but they have in the new system, they have in the body. Now in uh, Fujifilm, most advanced system they have. In the X-C4 they started, in the uh, X-H1 if I'm not mistaken, and all the new ones they have in the body a uh, stabilization. So the benefit on Fujifilm, if you're using a lens like the 16 to 80, it have a OIS and the body have a IBIS. They work in conjunction with each other, so they, that helps a lot with taking a better photo. And sometimes I take multiple shots, which is a um, bracket, uh, bracketing exposure, which three shots consecutive with each other with the DR400 on. Without a tripod, that's crazy, I know, but I had great images. But here in the Nikon, I cannot do that, actually. I tried it, it's not working. So be aware of your system, check your system, and uh, most of all, your shutter speed is the most important here, and don't be afraid of your ISO. Guys, I hope you find this video interesting. Because for me, I had this issue when I was starting my photography career. And I saw this in my eyes when I was in Italy, in Tuscany. I reached a beautiful spot where everyone takes these beautiful photos of the spot there in Tuscany with the castle and the trees. I reached there. I walked like around for almost an hour. And then the, guy, the people who were standing at the entrance with their tripod, they stay, stayed there. I managed to walk around, take different shots with different focal length, all handheld, and then I left and they were still there. Well, that's a bit not so much uh, creative. There's sometimes they need to put the camera on the tripod and then wait for something to happen and take a photo. Okay, now I understand that, yes. But there was a castle. I don't see something happening, not even birds if they're coming in front of the castle. It doesn't work like that. You need something clear so you see the bird more clearly. So understand your situation. Know your shutter speed and know to be a bit more creative and to go and take other shots. So yeah, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you do, please give me a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to see other videos. If you like to see something else, drop a comment down below, let me know what you need to, I help you with. Tschüss.